Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This is the third mini project candidate that you can choose from. And in this mini project, we'll look at the declining sea ice extent near Alaska over the past 35 years from 1979 to 2013. And your ultimate goal is to produce a plot showing the August sea ice extent near Alaska from 1979 to 2013. And basically you'll see that it declines and then it reaches its minimum in 2012. Okay, so to get started, what you need to do is download the sea ice extent product from a website. Okay, so the CIS extent is remotely sensed using microwave sensors, and the product is produced by the National Snow and Ice Data Center. So if you go to this website, National Snow Ice and Data Center.org slash data slash GIS slash data dot HTML, and then just scroll down. Here's the sea ice index product. And what we want to do is get the shape files that were produced from the microwave remote sensing. So if you go to the FTP site, we want for every year the minimum extent sea ice. So that would be in August. So then the next step would be to go to the August folder. And then the SHP extent folder. And then download the polygons for North America or for the Northern Hemisphere from 1979. So this polygon all the way to 2013. So our last polygon we're going to download will be extent North America or Northern Hemisphere 2013 August polygon. So you'll download those files and there'll be 35 zip files for 35 years. And then you'll unzip those 35 files and then you'll have 35 shape files that we can work with. So I've unzipped the 35 files and then I'll add them into my data frame in ArcMap. And then turn all layers off and collapse all layers. So here's the Northern Hemisphere sea ice extent from August of 1979. And our last year will be 2013. So here's the extent from 2013 and here's 1979. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're interested in an area near Alaska. So we'll make a polygon defining our study area. And we'll do that in a new data frame. So insert new data frame. Okay, so I use the create fishnet tool to create a polygon with longitude and latitude areas around Alaska. So we're gonna range in latitude from 67 degrees north to 76 degrees. And from the border of Alaska and Canada is negative 141 degrees west to negative 177 degrees. So our origin will be at negative 177 and 67 degrees north. And our y-axis will go straight north. So we'll go from negative 177 in the x straight north to 77 degrees. And then um, I put a zero as my cell width and cell height to let the create fishnet tool calculate what the appropriate width and height should be. And we want one row, one column, because we want one polygon. And then the opposite corner will be the border between Alaska and Canada, negative 141, and then 76 degrees north. And then make a polygon, and then just OK. Okay, so the next step is we'll project our polygon, which is in longitude and latitude, into a planar coordinate system, the Alaska Albers coordinate system. So to do that, we'll use the project tool. So I'm going to project into my CIS Geo database that I created this, which is in the geographic coordinate system, North American 1983 datum. I'll project back into that Geo database. 
and I'll call my new feature class study area AK Albers NAD83. And then my output coordinate system will be projected. And then continental North America Alaska Albers equal area conic. And then just OK. OK, so we'll make a new data frame. So insert data frame and then copy our Alaska Albers into that new data frame. So there's our study area in the Alaska Albers coordinate system. And this will be right along the Alaska Canada border is negative 148 degrees or negative 141 degrees longitude. And this will be negative 177 degrees longitude. Okay, so now what we want to do is project all our sea ice concentration into this same coordinate system. So to do that, we'll use the batch project tool. So from my data frame, I'll select all my sea ice extent polygons. So holding the shift key down, I grab all 35 layers and then just drag those into the input feature class dialog. And then we need to output where we're going to output to. So that will be our geo database. And then what is our new coordinate system? So our new coordinate system will be the Alaska Albers coordinate system. So once again, I could go to my projected continental North America Alaska Albers. And then it will project using the same name all 35 shapefiles into our geo database. And in our geo database, they'll be in the Alaska Albers coordinate system. Okay, so we have a new data frame that's in the Alaska Albers coordinate system with our study area. And then we'll add to that data frame from our geo database all the extent polygons that were projected into the Alaska Albers coordinate system. I hold the shift key down and then add all those feature classes from that geo database. So for example, here's the extent of the August sea ice from 1979. And then the extent from 2013. So the next step will be, we want to know what is the area of sea ice within this study area polygon, which is close to Alaska. So for example, we could add a MODIS image from a, our previous lab. So from week number two, we had Denali National Park and MODIS. So we'll add that AK MODIS from the 17th of June, 2013, just to see where our study area is in relation to that image. Okay, so here's our study area. Here's the coastal plain of Alaska. So basically the Arctic Ocean and the Chukchi Sea. And then basically we're going to go in this direction. So this is our study area we're interested in. What's the area of sea ice within this area? So the next step is to use the clip tool and cut out the extent of sea ice from each of these sea ice products that are inside our study area. So to do that, we'll use the clip tool and we'll use it in batch mode. So we right mouse click on the clip tool and then batch. And then our first one will be the 1979 sea ice extent is what we're gonna cut out. And we're gonna cut that out using our study area polygon. And then we'll output to our geo database. And we'll call it clipped extent. And then you would do that for all 35 years. So you would add the next row, and the next row will be for 1980. So we'll change this to 1980. And the output class will be change this to 1980. And repeat the process. You would add another row for 1981, and continuing that all the way down to 2013. Okay, so 1979, 1979 output all the way down to our last row, row 35, will be 2013 as our input extent sea ice, 
and the output will be clipped extent 2013. And then just OK. So here we have our study area and we have the sea ice extent from each August from 1979 to 2013 clipped to be inside that study area. So if we look at the attribute table, we're in a geo database. We have the area of each polygon in meters squared, but we don't have the year as a field. So the next steps to use add field in batch mode and add a short integer field name year to each of the polygon attribute tables. So for each of the clipped CI6 stents, we now have a new short integer field name year. So this example is from 1979 all the way up to 2013. So here are two polygons that are sea ice polygons in 2013, and they both have a field name year. So the next step will be for each year, assign that integer value to that year field. And you can do that either manually or in batch mode using the calculate field geoprocessing tool. Okay, so we've got it set up. So for the clipped extent 1979 polygon, for that year field, we're going to add the constant 1979 all the way down to our last row, row 35. For that 2013 clip sea ice extent polygon, for the year field, we'll add the value 2013. And then if we click on this check button, it will validate all those 35 rows. So there are no errors, so then OK. OK, so open your polygon attribute tables to make sure that each clipped extent for each year has the appropriate year assigned to it. And then what we'll do is we'll merge those 35 polygon feature classes into one C ice extent feature class for the years 1979 to 2013. So we'll use the merge tool to do that. So using the merge tool, our input extent will be clip extent 1979 to 2013. So I can hold the shift key down and grab all 35 feature classes and add those as my input. And then I'll output to the same geo database and I'll name my new output Alaska Sea Ice Extent 1979 to 2013. And then just OK. So we have the output from the merge tool and we can sort by year. So for some years we have several CIs polygons. Our next step is to add a double precision field name square kilometers and then for each of these polygons calculate its area in square kilometers. And then right mouse click calculate geometry in square kilometers. So now we have for each year, for each polygon, what that sea ice extent area was in square kilometers. So now what we'll do is we'll summarize by year the total square kilometers of sea ice within our study area. So to do that, we'll use the summary statistics tool. And I'll, I'll put output to a DBF table, and that way I can open this DBF table in the software that I'm going to use to develop my scatter plots. And then the statistic field will be our square kilometers and sum those square kilometers. And then we're going to do that for every year. So our case field will be year. So for every year, give us the total square kilometers of sea ice within our Alaska study area. And then just OK. So here's our DBF table, and I changed the number format to zero to the right of the decimal, show thousand separators and pad with zeros for that field sum square kilometers. So here we have from 1979 all the way to 2013, the total area of sea ice within our study area in square kilometers. And since this is a DBF table, you can use Excel or whatever software you want to develop the plot of the total square kilometers of sea ice as a function of year, where year is going to vary from 1979 to 2013.